Laura Piana, once synonymous with quiet luxury, is making a bold declaration. We're not quiet anymore. But as this iconic brand steps into the spotlight, one has to ask, has Laura Piana found a new direction? Or is it straying too far from its roots? Under the leadership of CEO Damien Bertrand, Laura Piana is undergoing a transformation that's turning heads and raising eyebrows. The brand, known for its discreet elegance, is expanding its product lines, embracing new markets, and shaking off the quiet luxury label. Yet, as Loro Piana's luxurious offerings begin to appear in more accessible venues, even discount outlets, loyal customers and industry insiders alike are left wondering if the brand is losing its way. Now, to understand where Loro Piana is headed, and whether it can balance this bold transformation with its heritage, let's take a look back at where it came from. A history steeped in tradition, craftsmanship, and a commitment to quiet, understated luxury. Loro Piana's journey began over two centuries ago in the quiet, picturesque town of Trevero in northern Italy. The Loro Piana family, steeped in the traditions of the wool trade, established themselves as master weavers and fabric merchants. By the early 19th century, the family had already built a reputation for producing some of the finest textiles in the region. Their commitment to sourcing the highest quality materials and meticulous craftsmanship quickly set them apart from other merchants, laying the foundation for the brand's future success. However, it wasn't until the 1920s that the brand we know today began to take shape, thanks to Pietro Loro Piana, who transitioned the family business from trading raw materials to producing exquisite fabrics. This strategic shift marked the beginning of Loro Piana's evolution from a regional textile producer to a global luxury powerhouse. Pietro's vision for the company was to combine traditional craftsmanship with innovative techniques ensuring that each fabric produced was of unparalleled quality. The post-World War II era marked a significant turning point for Loro Piana. Under the leadership of Franco Loro Piana, the company began to source the finest raw materials from around the globe. Cashmere from Mongolia, Vicuña from the Andes, and Merino wool from Australasia, transforming them into luxurious textiles that became the envy of the high fashion world. This relentless pursuit of excellence was not just about finding the best materials. It was also about forging deep relationships with suppliers, ensuring that Loro Piana had access to the rarest and most exclusive fibers available. In the 1970s, Franco's sons Pierluigi and Sergio Loro Piana took the helm and further expanded the brand's reach. They diversified the company's offerings by introducing finished garments under the luxury goods division catering to a clientele that valued timeless elegance and functional design. Their innovative spirit led to the introduction of Baby Cashmere in the 1990s, an ultra-soft and rare variant of cashmere that required a decade of research and collaboration with Mongolian herders to perfect. This achievement not only showcased Loro Piana's dedication to quality, but also its commitment to preserving traditional practices while pushing the boundaries of textile innovation. Throughout its history, Loro Piana remained steadfast in its values. The brand shunned traditional advertising, relying instead on word of mouth and the quality of its products to build its reputation. This strategy of quiet exclusivity was instrumental in cultivating an image of luxury that was both discreet and highly sought after. The brand's focus on delivering exceptional quality without the fanfare of overt marketing efforts appealed to those who preferred their luxury, understated, and their wealth private. It was this very ethos that earned Loro Piana the label of quiet luxury, a term that perfectly encapsulated the brand's identity as a purveyor of refined elegance. And you know, we are Loro Piana, and uh, we produce luxury fabric. And for this reason, uh, we would like always to guarantee uh, the top quality. This is not a compromise for us. Milestones, such as the introduction of baby cashmere, the development of exclusive textile blends, and the brand's expansion into finished luxury garments were not just business decisions. They were pivotal moments 
that defined Loro Piana's legacy in the luxury industry. These achievements solidified Loro Piana's position as a leader in both innovation and tradition, creating a brand that was as much about preserving heritage as it was about setting new standards in luxury. As we reflect on Loro Piana's history, it becomes clear that the brand's legacy is built on more than just luxury. It is built on a deep respect for tradition, a passion for innovation, and an unwavering commitment to quality. However, as the brand enters a new era under the leadership of Damien Bertrand, the question arises, can Loro Piana navigate the delicate balance between honoring its past and embracing the future? Damien Bertrand's appointment as CEO marked a significant turning point for Loro Piana. Bertrand, who previously held key roles at other LVMH brands, was handpicked by Bernard Arnault to steer Loro Piana into a new era. His vision for the brand is clear, to make Loro Piana the most desired luxury label in the world. This ambition requires a delicate balance between innovation and tradition, a challenge that Bertrand has approached with a series of strategic shifts. One of the most noticeable changes under Bertrand's leadership is the increased focus on leather goods, a category that has quickly become one of the brand's fastest growing segments. The introduction of products like the Bale handbag, which often sells out on Loro Piana's e-commerce platform, signals a move towards broader product diversification. While Loro Piana's reputation has been built primarily on its luxurious cashmere and wool offerings, the success of these leather goods represents a significant broadening of the brand's portfolio. Bertrand has also introduced innovations in fabric technology, such as the creation of a denim cashmere blend and the launch of 100% recycled cashmere products. These developments align with contemporary demands for sustainability and innovation, yet they maintain the brand's commitment to quality. Such innovations suggest that Loro Piana is not just adapting to modern trends, but is also seeking to lead them. Perhaps the most striking aspect of Loro Piana's transformation is its rejection of the quiet luxury label. Bertrand has been vocal about distancing the brand from this term, arguing that it no longer fully encapsulates the essence of Loro Piana. Quiet luxury is sometimes how they define us. But if quiet means silent, I don't believe it's the right word for us, Bertrand stated in a recent interview. This shift in messaging is significant, as it signals a departure from the brand's long-held philosophy of subtlety and discretion. Instead, Bertrand envisions a Loro Piana that is still rooted in excellence, but is also more visible, more contemporary, and more engaging with a broader audience. This includes a new emphasis on modern silhouettes, seasonal themes, and even subtle branding all of which aim to make Loro Piana products more accessible and desirable to younger, more diverse consumers. As Loro Piana navigates this period of transformation, the challenge lies in balancing these innovations with the traditions that have made the brand iconic. While Bertrand's strategy has undoubtedly brought fresh energy to Loro Piana, it has also raised concerns among loyal customers who fear that the brand may be straying too far from its roots. The introduction of more visible branding, the expansion into new product categories, and the brand's increasing presence in more accessible venues, including rumors of appearances and discount outlets, have all sparked debate about whether Loro Piana is diluting its exclusivity. However, Bertrand insists that these changes are necessary for the brand's continued growth and relevance. By carefully blending tradition with modernity, Loro Piana aims to maintain its status as a leader in the luxury market, while also attracting new generations of customers who may not have previously considered the brand. As Loro Piana navigates this transformation, it faces several controversies and challenges that could shape its future. Central to the controversy is the question of Loro Piana's identity. For decades, the brand has been synonymous with understated elegance, catering to a clientele that valued discretion over ostentation. However, with Bertrand's push towards broader appeal and the rejection of the quiet luxury label, 
Some longtime customers fear that Loro Piana may be losing the qualities that made it unique. The introduction of more visible branding, new product lines like the popular Bale handbag, and an overall shift towards modern silhouettes have led to concerns that the brand is straying too far from its roots. This tension is particularly evident in the way the brand is positioning itself in the market. Loro Piana's recent strategies, including its increased focus on leather goods and innovations in fabric technology, are designed to attract a younger, more diverse audience. However, this has raised questions about whether the brand can maintain its exclusivity while appealing to a broader market. Another significant challenge for Loro Piana is the rising cost of its products, coupled with the brand's increasing visibility in more accessible retail spaces. Traditionally, Loro Piana has been a brand that symbolized ultimate luxury, with products that were not just expensive, but also rare and difficult to obtain. However, the recent possibility of Loro Piana products appearing in discount outlets like Saks Fifth Avenue has led to speculation that the brand may be diluting its exclusivity. While these moves might broaden the brand's customer base, they also risk alienating its core clientele, who have long valued Loro Piana for its rarity and discretion. The brand's reputation for being the pinnacle of luxury is built not just on the quality of its products, but also on the exclusivity that comes with limited availability and a lack of overt marketing. By becoming more accessible, Loro Piana may be jeopardizing the very elements that have made it so desirable. From the rise of social media and the increasing influence of cultural phenomena like the TV show Succession, which prominently featured Loro Piana's products, have also impacted the brand's perception. These platforms have introduced Loro Piana to a wider audience, many of whom may not fully appreciate the brand's heritage and values. This exposure has helped fuel the brand's growth, but it has also led to concerns that Loro Piana is becoming too mainstream, losing the exclusivity that has long been its hallmark. Moreover, as Loro Piana adapts to the changing luxury landscape, it must contend with evolving consumer expectations. Today's luxury consumers are not just looking for high-quality products. They are also seeking brands that align with their values, whether it's sustainability, innovation, or social responsibility. Laura Piana's ability to meet these expectations while staying true to its roots will be crucial in determining its future success. The shift from being an emblem of quiet luxury to a more visible and accessible luxury brand has positioned Loro Piana in direct comparison with other high-end labels that are also evolving to meet modern demands. Loro Piana's strategic shifts can be seen in contrast to brands like Brunello Cucinelli, The Row, and Ralph Lauren's Purple Label. Each of these brands has carved out a niche in the luxury market, but they've done so with varying degrees of visibility and accessibility. Brunello Cucinelli, for example, has maintained its reputation for understated elegance while embracing a more socially responsible business model. The Row, founded by Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen, has mastered the art of minimalist luxury, appealing to those who appreciate quiet sophistication. Ralph Lauren's purple label, on the other hand, combines timeless style with bold statements, catering to a clientele that values both tradition and innovation. Loro Piana's decision to reject the quiet luxury label and increase its focus on leather goods and visible branding places it in a unique position. While it shares the Row's commitment to quality and Brunello Cuccinelli's dedication to craftsmanship, Loro Piana is pushing the boundaries further by introducing product innovations and expanding into new markets. This strategy is intended to capture a younger, more diverse audience while still appealing to its traditional customer base. As Loro Piana steps into this new era, the brand's future will depend on its ability to innovate while staying true to its heritage. If successful, Loro Piana has the potential to redefine luxury for a new generation, maintaining its appeal in a market that increasingly values authenticity and craftsmanship. What are your thoughts on this Loro Piana quiet luxury shift? Let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching.
Till next time.